Be a pig pig. How you doing? Come on. One of the finest things you can make from pig. Sausages. So what I've got here then is seven pounds of pork trim, shoulder, bit of belly. You saw what I trimmed off that carcass. We got about 30% fat as well. You need that all important fat. So seven pound of meat. I've got a pound of rusk, as you can see there. And I've got four ounces of my seasoning of choice. And then two pints of water. The first thing is first, we need to put our trim through the mixer. Okay, you might not want to watch all this. We'll get it through lickety split. Job is a good one. These lovely old trays are so sought after. And they're worth quite a lot of money. So if you ever see them and you want one, grab them. They are just wonderful for all butchery manufacturing. Going to put in my meat. Going to put in one pint of water to start with. Just to get it. All sticky beautiful in with the seasoning now this will make a 10 pound batch so far off these pigs I've made about 150 so this is just the last few bits a hundred and fifty pounds in weight basically 70 odd kilo right time for my other pint of water here we go it comes nice and sticky now that seasoning that water helps it go all the way through smells absolutely wonderful Next is my pound of rusk, the binder, also holds on to all that lovely fat, the flavour, give that a mix, make sure it's all nicely incorporated. And what we've got to do then is send this whole mix, which should weigh 10 pounds, just over back through the mincer just give it a good old mix and then when it goes back through the mincer of course it'll mix again lovely lovely sausage meat but we don't stop there we now have to mix again Find that fat to the lean. We want to get it real sticky so when you lift up a handful, it sticks. That's how you get your texture and your sausage to be consistent and no crumbling, no dryness. A good mix, the rusk, very important for a proper banger. And just to help it on its way, just a splash of water, and you'll see how it changes. You can get your hand in. Yes, I'm wearing a ring, and no, I don't care. So save your comments, the food Nazis. So, yeah, just spend five minutes 
it is hard work it's a bit of a ball breaker but it is one of the most important parts of the process We're getting there. Look, if I was to hold that in my hand, it sticks. So I'm not holding that at all. It's just gathered. So once we're happy with that, we'll go over to my gorgeous vintage sausage stuffer and pipe these bad boys into cases. So my vintage stuffer is locked and loaded. Now I've got some hogs casings here, which are the thicker ones. So if you're starting out sausage making, these are the best ones. They're very forgiving. But I have noticed there's a couple of holes in these, which is a bit of a ball ache. But the show must go on. So thread them on. Just like that. Put a bit of water in the bottom of your tray just to help slide it with your cloth just dry off the skins there's the end now what i need to do is bring the piston in my sausage machine up and it will start pushing the air out and bringing the sausage meat through as you can see there and then The fun begins. I like to hold mine just so it feels the first. Nice and steady. No rush. And sausages magically begin to appear from this beautiful, beautiful bit of kit I bought. It must be well, 60, 80 years old, hand cranked, so none of this hydraulic malarkey, and of course, because I'm trying to talk at the same time, it's not coming out as smooth as I want it to, but I don't care. I'm pontificating about my sausage stuffer. There's a hole up there. So yeah, there's another one there. It can be a bit of a pain. It's the last thing you want. So I'm just holding my fingers over the end, just gauging how much is going in here. And I'm hoping I'll get the whole 10 pound, but I know I'm gonna have trouble tying some of these because of those holes. Come to the end of the piston. Look at that. Okay then, so this is called a chain of sausages and we are going to tie it into links I'm just going through just checking it now I'm really wary of those splits there which are a nightmare so like I said if you're new to this I wouldn't bother with those just take them off and put some clean ones on some clean ones some <laughs> Oh, uh, you know what I mean. So, here we go. So measure the sausage, how big you want it. I'm going to go like that. Some of you might have seen this before. Right on that split there. So I've made three sausages. I don't want to hang about because of those splits. It makes it so messy. So I've got to be really gentle here. Yeah, so just pushing the chain through. Measuring two. Twisting. And then bringing the end up. Right again, the split. So I'm hoping I could disguise that in there. It won't affect the sausage. Just makes it difficult. Because the meat will swell anyway. When it cooks. And then the skins will dry around the meat anyway as well. So, yeah, no problemo. So, yeah, we just go along. A lot of love and care goes into your saucy songs, people.
finish that one off I am actually going to just shorten it do it one of them monster sausage tie it trim it and now you can see where those splits were the pressure is forcing them out but most of them are perfect there's your sausage how to make sausages from your piggies good isn't it 